You're driving down Interstate 15 towards Las Vegas, and there, in the distance, you see it. A giant thermometer, and a bunch of gas stations and fast food restaurants, and since you still have another hour and a half left to go before you get to Vegas, you pull off the highway to get a snack and stretch your legs. If you planned your trip correctly, you don't have to gas up and can make it across the state line into Nevada instead of getting gouged here in fabulous Baker, California. No kidding, I guess gas really is like a dollar more expensive out here than anywhere else. But if you need gas, what are you gonna do? It's a lot cheaper than getting towed. I've stopped here many times and I always wondered if there was more to Baker than just gas stations, fast food restaurants, and the world's tallest thermometer. So today, I'm here to find out. <laughs> this thermometer is actually really cool though. Uh, it's 134 feet tall and it was built to that height to commemorate the hottest temperature ever recorded on planet Earth, which was 134 degrees in Death Valley back in uh, July 1913, I think. And yes, I know that record is disputed by people who say the methods they used back then to measure temperatures wasn't accurate by today's scientific standards, but hey, it's good enough for Baker. Although today you can see it's only about mm, 77. Balmy. Anyway, the thermometer was built by the owner of the Bun Boy restaurant back in 1991, and he spent like three quarters of a million dollars on it. You know, I guess just as a way of getting people to pull off the highway, come spend money in Baker, and come spend money at the Bun Boy. If you've ever driven I-15 between LA and Vegas, you probably remember seeing signs for the Bun Boy. Unfortunately, well, it's been torn down now. Anyway, after spending three quarters of a million dollars to build this thermometer, before he even had a chance to light it up for the first time, it blew over in a windstorm. You might see that it's real windy today. It gets really windy out here, and I guess there was some crazy windstorm back in 1991 that blew the dang thermometer clean over. So he had to have it rebuilt again in 1992, and guess what? There was another windstorm, and the dang thing almost blew over again. I don't know if you can actually see from this angle, but it's actually three-sided in design, which I guess makes it more susceptible to high winds, which I guess is why they had so many problems with it blowing over. Well, anyway, the sign company that built it, Yesco, Young Electric Sign Company, uh, they do all the big neon signs in Vegas. Well, they came out and they filled the core of it with concrete so that they never have to worry about it blowing over again. Okay, so the thermometer has actually changed ownership several times over the years. And well, by 2012, I guess it wasn't really being maintained properly and it had really fallen into disrepair. I mean, they even turned it off once because I guess the power bill just to keep the thing lit was like $8,000 a month. One of the owners tried uh, taking out some of the light bulbs and replacing them with just red painted areas instead to save power. But I guess it was still really expensive to operate. And I know from personal experience, because I live in the same area, that power is really expensive out here. So I guess there was talk of just tearing it down, but finally the family of the original guy who built it was able to buy it back and reopen it again in 2014. Coincidentally, on the 101st anniversary of the hottest temperature ever recorded on Earth. Anyway, it's still standing today, and there's even a gift shop you can go in and buy world's biggest thermometer souvenirs. And, well, there used to be, there used to be a little frying pan on this rock. <laughs> so you could see if it was really hot enough to fry an egg. But it looks like they tore it off. Oh, what a bummer. I mean, look, you can actually see where 
part of the frying pan is still attached. This is a real American tragedy. I'll bet you anything some vandals came in and tore off this frying pan. So lame. I guess you used to be able to, I can't remember, it was a cast iron frying pan or a replica, and I don't remember if there was actually a fake fried egg in it, or there was some kind of sensor in it. Uh, so you could go inside the gift shop. You had to go inside the gift shop to find out exactly how hot it really was on that frying pan on that particular day. <laughs> Classic tourist gimmick. Really bummed that it's not here anymore. And then there's this place. Alien Fresh Jerky. <laughs> I mean, I guess it's just a beef jerky store that kind of piggybacked on the whole <laughs> alien shtick. Even though Baker is nowhere near Area 51 or anything to do with aliens, well, by gum, you can get yourself some alien jerky right here. Believe it or not, I've actually never been to this place, but it actually looks pretty cool. Uh, not only is there a huge gift shop, there's also this <laughs> car parked out front that says it's the uh, Interplanetary Galactic Federation Galaxy Peace Patrol. Now, you tell me, I don't know what kind of car this thing was built out of, but it's full of four very serious looking aliens in really nice <laughs> silver spacesuits. <laughs> and then next to the Peace Patrol car, there's this little, oh God, oh, it's one of those rides. You put quarters in it. And I guess it jiggles you up and down. Oh, it doesn't look like it takes quarters, or it looks like it takes dollars. My, how times have changed. So I guess you put your dollars in and gosh, I don't know. It doesn't look like you can actually get in it. Maybe there's a spot in the back. Uh, actually, no, there is nowhere to get in it. So I don't even think it is a ride. I think it's just a place you can put money in if you can't figure out any place better to spend it. Okay, let's go in. Wow, <laughs> that place was way cooler than I expected it to be. And frankly, I'm astonished and embarrassed that I haven't been in there before. But hey, check this out. Out back behind the gift shop, it looks like whoever built this place has some pretty big plans. I mean, this time travel station, Alien Pretzels, looks like it was meant to be some kind of, well, food stand. Looks like they're gonna have pretzels, alien dog bites, alien pretzel dog, ice cream, drinks. But it looks like it's not open, and in fact, it looks like it never opened. Maybe, the, uh, well, I'm guessing maybe the pandemic had something to do with that. I mean, if you think about it, when Vegas was closed down in 2020, it basically shut down almost all tourist traffic, if not all tourist traffic on I-15. So gosh, I can imagine that poor Baker was really hard hit. And then look at this construction site for UFO Hotel. They're building a whole alien themed UFO hotel. Imagine that right here in little Baker, California. Okay, so there's the alien fresh jerky store. There's the world's tallest thermometer. But what about the back streets? According to what uh, I read online, as of the 2010 census, there was something like 700 people who live in Baker. So there must be some kind of actual town. Believe it or not, there actually is a town of Baker and it was originally founded back in 1908 as a station on the historic 
Tonopah and Tidewater Railroad. <laughs> now, if you know anything about railroads, you know that the TNT was uh, kind of like a mining railroad spur, I guess, that went from Tonopah, Nevada, well, I guess in theory, all the way out to the California coast, only it never made it that far and dead ended in the desert near I-40 at a place called Ludlow. And I'm not exactly sure where, but apparently you can still see the old TNT Railroad grade running right through the town of Baker. And fun fact, Baker is actually named after one of the guys who started the TNT Railroad. Ugh, sorry it's so windy. Uh, I guess you can see how that thermometer blew down. Anyway, uh, Baker was essentially just a railroad station until 1929 when a town was established here by a guy named Ralph Dad Fairbanks who had also established the town of Shoshone. Okay, if you've ever been to Shoshone, they have that really cool old museum that talks about Dad Fairbanks. Well, his name was Ralph Fairbanks. I think he was known as Dad because the local Native Americans heard his kids calling him Dad and they just assumed his name was Dad and well next thing you know everyone was calling him Dad. Anyway he founded Shoshone and then he came down here and well there was already a railroad station but he he essentially turned it into a town and I guess he operated the first standard oil gas station in the whole area and I guess Dad Fairbanks was also the kind of guy who spent a lot of time extracting stranded tourists. <laughs> I mean, think about it. This was mm, the 1920s. A lot of people were getting their very first automobiles. And what do you want to do when you get your first automobile? Why, well, you want to take a Sunday drive to Death Valley. So I guess Dad Fairbanks spent a lot of time extracting shiny new Model T Fords from sand dunes. And well, consequently, he kind of made it his life's work to see a paved road built all the way from... Well, I guess Interstate 15 obviously wasn't here back then, but whatever the highway was between uh, Los Angeles and Las Vegas, Dad Fairbanks wanted to see a paved road from that highway all the way to Death Valley. And coincidentally, that highway would take all the tourists right through his towns of Baker and Shoshone. <laughs> Okay, let's get in the car and go cruise around the back streets of Baker to see what it would be like to live here. Okay, just like any town, Baker's got a post office and a fire station and schools and a church and a park and a market. Now that I think about it, it would be kind of fun to do a staycation in Baker. Uh, well, that is, if all the motels weren't closed and abandoned. And, well, also, there aren't any bars. That's right, there's nowhere in the town of Baker where you can sit down and have a drink. Uh, I mean, I guess you could always go get a six-pack of beer and go hang out behind the world's tallest thermometer. But Baker in 2021 isn't exactly the kind of place you want to go for a staycation. driving around the back streets of Baker. It's basically just your average little hard scrabble desert town. You know, a lot of people living in trailers, a lot of people living in manufactured homes. A lot of people like they're just barely getting by, but I'll bet it's actually pretty nice living in Baker. I mean, if you're into off-roading or prospecting or hiking or exploring the mountains, well, you're surrounded by nothing but open desert and wide blue skies and plenty of fresh air from all them cars passing on I-15. And well, I guess there's plenty of work at all them convenience stores and fast food joints. Wow. Okay, another thing I had no idea existed in Baker is this giant abandoned prison. Okay, so according to what I read online, this was a mm, smallish, like 250 beds, medium security, privately run, for-profit prison that I guess closed down in 2009 after kind of a troubled history. Um, I guess 
two prisoners escaped in 1995 and another two prisoners escaped in 1997. And then in 2003, there was a terrible prison riot here where like 17 inmates ended up in the hospital. I think they were all brawling for like 20 minutes straight. Uh, again, according to what I was able to research, I guess the brawl was started when they transferred, uh, like a prison snitch was transferred here. Um, I don't know why they transferred a prison snitch to a low security small prison like this, but boy, it started a ruckus. And I think it was also kind of racially motivated. Like the snitch was white and the prison was kind of half white and half Latino. And so, you know how they have those prison gangs. Well, to make matters worse, because it was a privately uh, contracted prison, a for-profit prison, I guess guards at those kinds of prisons aren't, they're either not allowed to be armed or they're not allowed to get violent. So they basically weren't able to do anything to stop the brawl. And well, that's why it went on for like 20 solid minutes. Okay, why the school bus is turning into the prison, I'll never know. It's weird because I wasn't even sure I could drive over here because there's no trespassing signs. So I kind of like pulled my car over to the side of the road to like stay out of the way. But like all these cars keep passing me and now this friggin' school bus pulled into the abandoned prison grounds. Baker is even stranger than I ever imagined. <laughs> really weird though because if I zoom in you can see there's like cars parked and children at play sign. <laughs> I was like ah oh, I wonder it almost looks like they turned this into apartments. What part of town do you live in? Oh I live out of the old abandoned prison. I wonder if this is considered a nice part of town. Okay, wow, I had no idea this prison existed and now I'm weirdly fascinated by it. I mean, there's these signs out front that I guess used to say the name of the prison, but now they, somebody came in like some graffiti artist wag. Well, this one says, Baker Lakeview Road, upscale family style housing community. And then this one says, Baker Lakeview Road, private storage. <laughs> I'm pretty sure both of those are jokes because gosh, to me, it just looks like a huge abandoned prison. I just can't believe that in all my years exploring the Mojave Desert, there was an abandoned prison virtually in my own backyard that I never knew about. I mean, look at this. Here's the old abandoned rec yard, you know, the yard, you know, like in the movies where they go to take a walk and get fresh air and lift weights and make deals. Wow, look at this. This is a trip. All these miles and miles and miles and miles and miles and miles of coiled up barbed wire. Well, it was a minimum security prison, so I guess maybe the inmates lived in these low-slung kind of duplex-looking things? I mean, there's no, like, huge prison building. Fascinating. Ugh. Okay, I could snoop around this abandoned prison all day long, but, well, it is getting kind of late, and the light's getting kind of low, and, well, I still have to drive home after this, so I'd better make my way to my final and favorite destination in the fabulous town of Baker. But before I head over there, I am just gonna drive over to see if this really is a neighborhood now. I mean, this is weird. Wow. These really are like duplexes or fourplexes. And I don't know, this is kind of outside the barbed wire. So I don't know if any prisoners ever lived here, but I can't imagine anybody else lived right outside the prison. Maybe these were like quarters for the, I was gonna say for the warden, but how many wardens were there? You know what I mean? Like why else would there be all these weird duplexes right out in front of a prison complex? Okay, anyways, back to my favorite place in all of Baker, which happens to be the Mad Greek cafe. The first time I came here, I was totally confused as to how on earth a Greek restaurant ended up in the middle of the desert, in the middle of nowhere. But thanks to the research I did for this video, I found out that the family that started this place actually had a chain of Greek diners throughout Southern California. 
most of their other locations have closed, I think, but the one here in Baker supposedly did something like $4 million in business in 2018, which was the last uh, number I was able to find. It's become an iconic stop for anyone who's ever driven from LA to Vegas or vice versa. And what's really cool is the same family that started it is still running it. I think they're on their third generation. And unfortunately, we can't go inside right now. It's closed and it looks like they might be remodeling it, which I certainly hope isn't the case because, oh my God, it had the most classic. I'll try to find some B-roll from another video I did and put, put that in the video so you can see what I'm talking about. It was like this really bright royal blue vinyl banquets and Greek statuary everywhere and weird posters of Greece and stuff about famous Greeks. Like, I remember they even name checked the guy who invented the pap smear because, well, he was Greek. It was just a really weird, funky place. And oh gosh, I hope they don't remodel it too much. Oh, you know what? If we peek in over here, I think this back room anyways, this is exactly what it used to look like. Look at that. <laughs> Classic, only it didn't have blank white walls. There was like stuff all over the walls. I guess it's actually cool that they're remodeling because uh, from what I read online, they were really hit hard by the pandemic. Like I was saying earlier, uh, when Vegas shut down, it pretty much shut down traffic on I-15. So Baker was hit hard in general, and I'm sure the Mad Greek was hit hard in particular. So I'm glad they're at least going through the effort to remodel it, but golly, I hope they don't mess it up too bad. Okay, well, even though I can't go inside and sit down and eat a meal, I guess I'll at least get a shake or something to tide me over on the drive home. Mmm. Yum. Greek salad, feta fries, and a strawberry shake. What a great way to wrap up my visit to Baker.